spinal nerves. These are representing the second part of our peripheral nervous system. And obviously we know the spinal nerves. These are the nerves that are arising from the spinal cord. The nerves that are arising from the brain, we call them as cranial nerve. The nerves that are arising from the spinal cord, they are called as spinal nerves. And in human being, they are 31 pairs. 31 pairs of spinal nerves are present. They are 31 pairs. Okay. Now, very interesting fact is that if we consider the total number of vertebrae, they are 33 in number. So, 1, 2, 3, 33. And automatically in between them, the gaps are there. Now, that gaps are called as intervertebral disc. And from the lateral side of that intervertebral disc, a pair of spinal nerve arises. So, automatically there are 31 pairs. Remember, 33 vertebrae, they are present in the human vertebral column. And in between each vertebrae, a small gap is there. And from that gap, the spinal nerves are arising from the lateral side. So, there are obviously 31 pairs of spinal nerves that are present. And already we know, already we have studied histological structure of the spinal cord where we have explained the dorsal horn, ventral horn, and dorsal horn gives rise to dorsal root, ventral horn gives rise to the ventral root. In outside the spinal cord, outside the vertebral column, they join together. And in that also, already we have explained the dorsal root is sensory, ventral root is motor. And when they come outside, outside the vertebral column, outside the spinal cord, they join together to form spinal nerves. So automatically, a spinal nerve will have both sensory and motor function. So all the spinal nerves, all the spinal nerves, they are mixed type. And these spinal nerves, regionally, they can divide it into the four, five types. Totally five types are there according to the region of the spinal cord. Okay, so accordingly, we can have five different types of spinal nerves. The first one, it is in the neck region that is called a cervical group. Spinal nerves in the cervical region, they are totally eight pairs and they are symbolized as C1, C2, C stand for cervical. So C1 to C8, they are representing the cervical spinal nerves. And the uh, origin, it is from the neck region, obviously, cervix, uh, cervical region, it is nothing but the neck region. So, eight pairs are, are there in the cervical region. Then, the next region, it is a back region. So, we call it as an upper back, thoracic region. Now, this thoracic region, it is quite large and it is containing 12 pairs of spinal nerves. And accordingly, they are symbolized as T1, T2, T3 up to T12. So T1 to T12, they are thoracic in nature. Origin will be in the upper, we can say, abdominal region that is called as thorax. Upper back, we can say. Then the lower back, it is the lumbar region. It is the lower back, that is lumbar region. It gives rise to five pairs of the spinal nerves. And accordingly, they are symbolized as C1, uh, sorry, L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. L stand for lumbar. And obviously, they are uh, originating from the abdominal region. Next region is sacral region. And in the sacral region, again, five pairs are there. Now, they are symbolized as S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. So, S stands for sacral region. And they are arising from the pelvic region. Pelvic, lower abdominal region, pelvic region. It is, we can say, the sacral nerves that are arising. Then next one, it is the last one that is called as causal, And only one pair it arises in the human. It is CO, causal standing for CO, only one pair. And they are arising from the cossacks. So in all, 31 pair, 8 plus 12 plus 5 plus 5 plus 1, 31 pairs are there. 8 in the cervical, 12 in the thoracic, 5 in the lumbar, 5 in the sacral, and even one pair in the causal region that is representing what we call it as an spinal nerves. So to summarize, spinal nerves, they are arising from the spinal cord. Number two, they are formed due to dorsal, sensory, and ventral motor 
roots and when they are fused they form the mixed type of nerve so all the type of spinal nerve they are mixed in nature and they are divided into five groups according to the region of the body cervical 8 thoracic 12 lumbar 5 sacral 5 and cossigial 1 they are representing the spinal nerves so that is a story of peripheral nervous system more correctly talking cranial and spinal nerves cranial there are 12 pairs in the human being and spinal there are 31 pairs i hope you understood both of these and then next thing we are going to see the formation of each and every spinal nerve it is already explained by me each and every spinal nerve it is formed by union fusion of sensory dorsal root and motor ventral root hence every spinal nerve is of mixed type remember cranial nerves they may be sensory motor or mixed but compulsorily all the all the spinal nerves they will be mixed the union of this dorsal and ventral root it occurs within the neural canal of the vertebral column i have told you the cavity within the vertebrae it is called as uh, neural canal and the cavity within the spinal cord itself it is called as central canal okay then the spinal nerves they come out of the vertebral column through small gap between the vertebrae and these are called as intervertebral foramen which are present on the lateral surface of the lateral sides of the vertebrae so this is the we can say nature of the vertebrae they are hollow inside neural canal one above the other they are placed and through that neural canal the spinal cord is passing but between the two vertebrae a small gap will be there and that is called as intervertebral foramen through which both the lateral side they will have the arising of the spinal nerves now these spinal nerves after emerging after coming out of the vertebral column they enter into the ciliomic cavity of the body and then immediately they are divided into three branches already we know that after emerging out of the vertebral column after emerging out of the spinal cord each spinal nerve it is further divided into three branches and already we know these three branches very well ramus that is branch dorsalis that is dorsal surface so ramus dorsalis it is a short dorsal branch that innervate skin and muscles of the back skin and muscles of the back on the dorsal surface then the second ramus ventralis obviously ramus standing for branch ventral is standing for ventral side it is the longest branch uh, we can say that is innervating skin and muscles of ventral and lateral sides of the body so for dorsal surface ramus dorsalis for ventral surface ramus ventralis and the third branch it is communicating with the third type of nervous system we call it as an autonomic nervous system and that branch of the spinal nerve which connect which communicate with the autonomic nervous system we call it as a ramus communicans if you remember we have explained that in the form of a diagram from ramus dorsalis ramus ventralis and ramus communicans these are the three branches that are given from the spinal nerves right i think these three can say ramus dorsalis on the dorsal surface ramus ventralis on the ventral surface and ramus communicans with communication with the autonomic nervous system then if we move further and go for the third type of nervous system that is called as autonomic nervous system we call it as an autonomic nervous system now this autonomic nervous system it is a third section of the nervous system as central nervous system number 1 number 2 peripheral nervous system and the third one it is the autonomic nervous system so what this autonomic it is independent it is definitely communicating with the cns but it is independent and what it does it control internal environment or working of the visceral organs all the visceral organs which are present within the body which are enclosed within the body cavity they are not controlled by central nervous system or peripheral nervous system they are controlled by this independent system of neuron that is called as autonomic nervous system now this autonomic nervous system it gives response to internal receptors 
and obviously they are involuntary in nature except the process of micturination. Now, very importantly, you should understand for CNS and for uh, peripheral nervous system, the stimuli they are in the surrounding, they are present outside the body. But for autonomic nervous system, the stimuli they are generated within the body. Right? If you are having empty stomach, if you are having empty stomach, then it gives some uh, sensation, it gives rise to some stimulus, and then you feel that I am hungry. Right? Now, this is called as internal stimulus. And this autonomic nervous system, it is responding to internal stimuli that are generated by internal receptors. And most of them are involuntary except the micturination. Now, we know micturination is a process by which the urine is passed. But this micturation, it is in the small kid, which is again controlled totally by autonomic nervous system. So when you are a kid, when the individual is very small in age, up to six years, the process of maturation is handled by autonomic nervous system. That's why the bed waiting process is there that you might be knowing. But as we move on, as we move, grow up, and then the control over maturation will be there and it will be handed over to CNS. But basically, at the time of birth, maturation is also controlled by autonomic nervous system. Later on, it will be shifted to central nervous system. Obviously, for autonomic nervous system, no sensory pathways are required. Only one, and that is nothing but the motor nerve fibers are there. What is this? Sensory, not present. Only motor nerves are present because they work on, they take the help of autonomy, uh, sorry, CNS and PNS. CNS and PNS, they are acting as sensory impulses for autonomic nervous system. So it doesn't require any receptor. It only gives response and that response is given by motor nerve fiber. So for neat purpose, you should remember that autonomic nervous system, it consists of motor nerve fiber only. Then question arises from where they are getting the sensory impulses. The sensory impulses will be collected by central nervous system, brain, spinal cord. And there is a sensory information, these are sensory impulses, they are handed over to the autonomic nervous system by a autonomic branch of the spinal nerve. It is called as ramus communicans. That is called as ramus communicans. Okay. So that's why it is important to understand the autonomic nervous system. It only consists of motor nerve. It work on the sensory input given by brain and spinal cord through the ramus communicans. Right. Now on the basis of location, on the basis of location, if we see the autonomic nervous system, it is further divided into two types. It is classified into two types. The first one, that is called a sympathetic nervous system. And the second one, it is called as parasympathetic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system further divided into two. Number one, sympathetic. Number two, parasympathetic. So let's understand this sympathetic nervous system. It is formed by... 12, uh, 22 pairs of sympathetic ganglia. Now, what is ganglia? Collection of neuron. We call it as a collection of neuron. So, sympathetic nervous system, it is formed by 22 pairs of sympathetic ganglia, which are linearly arranged, linearly placed on the two sides of sympathetic cord running on the either side of vertebral column. So, if it is the vertebral column, on the on either side of this vertebral column, the sympathetic ganglia will be placed and they are connected by a fine thread-like structure. We call it as a sympathetic cords. Now, these 22 pairs of sympathetic ganglia, they are connected to central nervous system by spinal nerve fiber into bracket ramus communicans. You can understand the importance of this ramus communicans. Because it is going to communicate between the central nervous system is independent work. It is autonomic nervous system is independently working. But they are communicating with one another. And that communication is with the help of ramus communicants. So once again, I will underline the fact that 
autonomic nervous system sympathetic nervous system parasympathetic nervous system they are connected by uh, connected to cns by spinal nerve fiber means it will be ramus communicans now this sympathetic nervous system it works during sleep pain anger fear and all the kind of emergencies so it doesn't require any outside input it is taking input from cns so automatically what our brain feel it will be given to autonomic nervous system and that's why it is working during the sleep pain anger fear and emergencies and it is a what we can say sympathetic nervous system that generate a fight or flight response it generate a fight or flight response now consider a situation that you are coming across your enemy you are going for college college rastyavar tumhala kuthe tari tumcha mitra bhetla mitra mane apeksha shatru bhetla jar ka to shatru tumcha apeksha weak asel kya tumcha barobar isa asel to you want to fight with him pan samor sa jar ka shatru pahlwan asel he is very strong ani tumhala guarantee hun geli ki ha aplyala fatkavnar हा आपल्याला झोडून काढणार तर अशाला तुम्ही काय करतात यू रन थ्रू द पतली गली ना दॅट रिस्पॉन्स इज फ्लाईट दॅट रिस्पॉन्स इज फाईट फाईट अँड फ्लाईट दीज आर द रिस्पॉन्सेस दॅट आर जनरेटेड विथ इन द सिम्पॅथॅटिक नर्वस सिस्टीम दॅट्स वाय इट इज कॉल्ड एज फाईट ऑर फ्लाईट सिस्टीम अँड दिस फाईट अँड फ्लाईट सिस्टीम इट इज वर्किंग ऑन सिक्रिशन ऑफ न्यूरो ट्रान्समीटर अँड दॅट न्यूरो ट्रान्समीटर ऑलरेडी वी नो नंबर ऑफ टाइम वी हॅव डिस्कस that sympathetic nervous system or sympathetic nerve fiber they secrete a neurotransmitter emergency hormone that is called as adrenaline or noradrenaline adrenaline and noradrenaline these are the emergency hormones which are responsible for generating fight and flight either fight or uh, flight that response is generated by so we can say adrenaline or noradrenaline then if we move the second one it is called as parasympathetic nervous system it is called as parasympathetic nervous system it is exactly opposite to the sympathetic what is that the parasympathetic nerve uh, system it consists of nerve fiber they are running along some cranial nerve and sacral nerve parallel to they are running parallel to cranial nerves and sacral nerves and obviously the parasympathetic ganglia they are present on the side of visceral organ near the visceral organ that is heart lungs kidneys and stomach they are present near to the organ in sympathetic they are near to the nervous system then parasympathetic nervous system it works on a secretion of a emergency hormone neurotransmitter it is called as acetylcholine sympathetic adrenaline and parasympathetic they secrete acetylcholine a neurotransmitter or inhibitory hormone to the visceral organs and obviously parasympathetic nervous system it will work during the rest and it will bring about relaxation comfort and pleasure so parasympathetic nervous system that consist of nerves nerve fiber running from cranial nerve and sacral nerve parallel to them the parasympathetic ganglia they are present on the sides of visceral organs like heart lungs kidney stomach etc they secrete a neurotransmitter hormone acetylcholine and it is actually exactly opposite to adrenaline and it will be inhibiting the action of adrenaline then it will work during the rest bring about relaxation comfort and pleasure so that is the parasympathetic nervous system okay okay now let's understand this sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system in a simple review now consider this is the drawing of human body and i regret for very poor drawing because i am doing it with the mouse to so, thoda samajhna padega okay now this is the brain and the posterior extension 
it is representing the spinal cord. Okay, now this is CNS. Now, very importantly, if we consider the sympathetic nervous system, it consists of the ganglia which are present on the either side of the spinal cord. So if they are shown near to the spinal cord, they must be sympathetic ganglia and they are connected by a thread that is called as cord, sympathetic cord. Okay, opposite to that, opposite to that, if the ganglia are located near the organs, peripheral part away from the CNS, then they will be the parasympathetic ganglia. Okay, they may be near the heart, they may be near lung, they may be near stomach, so away from the spinal cord and that are also connected by a cord and that cord is called as parasympathetic cord. Okay, then next thing, the sympathetic nervous system, it work on secretion of a neurotransmitter that is called as adrenaline or noradrenaline. However, the parasympathetic nervous system, it is working on the secretion of another neurohormone that is called as acetylcholine. Okay, the next difference we can say, the sympathetic nervous system, it works on increasing the speed of activity. And parasympathetic nervous system, it work on decreasing the speed of activity. So these are the major differences between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. More correctly, collectively, it is the autonomic nervous system. So I will repeat, number one, these both sympathetic and parasympathetic, these are the parts and parcels of autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system, the ganglia are located near CNS. Parasympathetic, the ganglia are away from the CNS near the visceral organ. The sympathetic nervous system, it is, it is controlled, it is active, it is working through secretion of a neurohormone that is called as adrenaline, noradrenaline. However, parasympathetic nervous system, it is working on, it is controlled by activities or through secretion of another neurohormone and that another neurohormone is acetylcholine. Then, sympathetic nervous system, they are working on increasing the speed of activity and parasympathetic, they are decreasing the speed of activity. Simply talking, just like you are two-wheeler, you have got accelerator sympathetic. You have got brakes, that is parasympathetic. So that is a basic differences between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. I hope you have understood the concept of autonomic nervous system, sympathetic nervous system, and parasympathetic nervous system, right?